This rabbit probably had 30 seconds of life after it was hit, and that was it. U.S. designer Pamela Paquin turns roadkill into stylish accessories. She creates her unique fashion items in her studio in Southbridge, Massachusetts. Some love them, others loathe them. Either way, her business model could revolutionize the fur industry. Pamela always keeps a close eye on the road when she's driving, looking for roadkill. In springtime in the U.S. state of Massachusetts, many wild animals come out of winter hibernation and get hit by cars. During this period, Pamela carefully scans the road for dead animals. From here out is, is rural. So this is all forest and fields and so on. So the animals that live up in this area um, come down into town, opossums, skunks, raccoons particularly, coyotes for cats, uh, to, to, for the food sources. But um, then this is the spot where they meet the chain link fence, the water, the houses, and the road. It's estimated that in the U.S. one million animals are killed by cars each day. Animal right groups are outraged by this, Pamela, roadkill is good for business. Provided the fur can be recovered. Oh no, I can't use this. Oh my God. No. See what I mean about bunnies getting totally squished? Bunnies tend to not farewell. He really got squished. I can't really use that. He's older too. Um, but he also presents a risk for scavengers coming in the road and getting hit when they look to eat him. So I'm just moving him off the side of the road so that if any scavengers come they don't get hit also. So. Pamela produces some 200 furs per year, though she doesn't find all of them herself. <laughs> Sometimes she buys them from George You're Cole in good. Connecticut. <laughs> All right, chance shake. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see more of you. <laughs> George is a butcher Look, by training and sells furs on the side. Here. Today, Pamela is collecting a new batch. Oh, you know, remember every year I get more and more fussy. So this is your flushing board. George yeah. sourced yeah. these cow oh, hides wow. from a slaughterhouse. Yeah, it's a different, different breed. Beautiful. Oh yeah, that's right. Look at that. It is. It's two different breeds. These raccoons were shot oh, yeah. by a hunter, but Pamela prefers roadkill. I was hoping to get uh, coyote, but the guy didn't get no coyotes this week. So. so which ones are mine? Any one of them, or any three of them, whatever you want, because there's, these are all roadkill in this week. I would think this one. Yeah, this one is is a good one. That's a pretty color. Uh, that gray in there, that's really pretty. So I'm just looking at the different colors here and the patterns, um, because if I can match them, then I can make those big neck muffs. And I would take it, and essentially I put them butt to butt, and they come around and nose to nose, something like that. Pamela lives in Southbridge, a former industrial town near Boston. Today, the old factory buildings are derelict. And she set up her studio in a defunct cotton factory. Her label is called Peace Fur.
there are two things I like about this. And one, um, one is doing something that matters, providing a real option, something that animal activists who care and love animals can get on board with, and something that the fur industry can get on board with. I'm not demanding the end to their industry. I'm simply suggesting another sourcing methodology. These are baby deer. Obviously, this one's a bit bigger. You can see right here where he got um, scraped on the road. You see where he got a little injury right there? Let me show you this girl. I picked this girl up in New Hampshire, and you can see, you see right here? She had actually been hit when I picked her up off the road, and her whole back hind quarter was really severely damaged, so I had to cut around it. So when I don't get to it in time and it's a little bit rotten, um, the bacteria has had a chance to work and the hair slips out and you get these big giant bald spots. So that's why timeliness matters. We only do it in the winter. That's when I collect the animals. It's essentially November to March. Pamela turns a run over Martin into a tube scarf and a possum into a pair of gloves. Her accessories sell for between $85 and $2,500. She wants to cater to customers who would normally never dream of buying a fur product. This was something that would make a difference in the world, that would provide a third option. You could have biodegradable, sustainable, luxurious heirloom material and you wouldn't have animals uh, dying for fashion or in cages or anything like that. But it can't be done without blood. That's part of her concept. At the Open Air Museum Old Sturbridge Village, Pamela demonstrates how to skin roadkill. She will never forget the first time she did this. I had about six shots of whiskey and uh, the raccoon was putrefied liquid inside and I was semi-vomiting into my mask. I had essentially a hazmat suit on at the time. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with it now because I know what I'm doing. Now she wants to get others comfortable with the idea of skinning roadkill. The poor little thing got hit in the road. Can you see? His little leg snapped. So I'm just working on getting off some of the fur that's still good. You see his muscles? I like the, I live just around the corner here. So we're putting on Pamela's a, uh, demonstration is great picture. advertising oh. <laughs> for her unconventional <laughs> fur business. Right, okay. She's convinced there is demand for her wares. Um, so, but fur season is basically over. They're all shedding now. You know, they're losing their fur after the winter. Right. And hold him up so I can get a picture of you. So but it's a, a chance for them really to see animals killed on the roads, to not be disgusted, to be curious, to see that there's still a value and that there's something to be recovered from that animal. And so it's, it becomes not just about uh, fur in and of itself, but the, the mindset that allows you to see value in something that others consider waste. Pamela's parents were farmers. She grew up surrounded by nature. <laughs> Are you mincing around the puddles, Mac? Though until recently she worked as a business consultant. After divorcing from her husband, she bought her parents land and built a little farm. She's a single mom and is used to taking matters into her own hands, just like her parents taught her. Growing up on a farm has influenced her way of seeing and treating animals. For her, their family, only rarely does she kill animals to eat them. We had a goat and he started uh, attacking my daughter and bruising her legs and I tried to work with him. We tried to keep him in fencing. He'd plow through the fencing. So finally, we ate him, you know? So that's, that's the way it is. If you're not nice, what, what is it? Be nice or be dinner. <laughs> be nice or be dinner. <laughs> that's well, the rule. Wanna, well, I don't want to eat any animals on my farm. You don't have to. And that's why we work with other farmers locally. Now I bring Winston to the side so I can get at the gate. Okay. Later, okay. the horses are herded into the paddock. And who? 
Pamela's daughter Naya always helps out around the farm. Her mom wants her to learn that keeping right, animals is a privilege, but also comes with responsibilities. All right, out. It's mud season, if you can't tell. <laughs> it's so bad. Well, I grew up on a farm, and the rule was you can't eat it unless you take part in raising it and in killing it and processing it. So it was a rule from when I was a little girl. And uh, I was very fortunate in that, you know, to have access to, to a farm and to see where my food came from. Final preparations are being made for a photo shoot in Pamela's studio. She's hired a model like and a photographer right so she can showcase her fur so, products on her website. Multiple layers. The otter's amazing. I know. It's so soft. Hmm. It's so soft. Yeah, a lot of these actually get hit down on Cape Cod because of the, they're living now in the, um, what you call it, in the canal. The otters are living in the canal and they're coming up and they're getting hit on Aww. Route 6. Yeah. Aww. Turn it, you mean? Smile. <laughs> but don't look at her, actually. I want you looking look, eyes away. I don't want you looking at the photographer. Close your eyes. There. That's good. That's good. To my goal, ultimately, is to change the fur industry for the better so that they can stay profitable and also that their clientele doesn't have to feel guilty about fur and where it comes from. Because whether or not it's my opinion or the furrier's opinions, a lot of urban living people don't want to be associated with caging. And so I'm trying to be, help the fur industry be responsive to that, that critique. Pamela doesn't mind that some people vehemently oppose so, all fur products so, um, because she's convinced she's running an ethical business. This hip out and then crisscross in front, we'll bring it there. And who knows, maybe Pamela's roadkill business really will help revolutionize the That's fur good, industry.